بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد continuing on in our study of aqidah tawasitiya by Sheikh Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala we in our last dars we spoke about that ahl sunnati wal jamaa that they follow the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that they take their religion they take their methodology, their minhaj, from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with ikhlas, with thabat, ala sunnah. And bless us to be of those who adhere to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with sincerity. Because as we have come across in our studies, how the salaf were. The salaf of this ummah, that they adhere to the Quran and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the statements of the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in. And they avoided newly invented manners. Newly invented matters. And unfortunately, in this time, 1434 years after the hijra of the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we find individuals who've studied in the places where the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet wasallam is studied and pondered upon and reflected upon, but yet when they come out of these institutions, they don't propagate what they've learned. And the Salaf were adamant and firm on practicing what they learned, practicing the Sharia, practicing the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam and the minhaj and methodology of the salaf. So nowadays you find individuals who say, I am no longer salafi, or I am no longer from Ahl sunnah or I am no longer this, or I am no longer that. But it shows you in contradiction to the sabila mu'mineen, to the path of the believers, that a lot of these individuals flip-flop. That one minute you'll find an individual who is on the outward appearance seeming to adhere to the statements of the scholars. And this time, the statements of the scholars of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. And mentioning the athar of the Salaf al Salih, radiallahu ta'ala majma'een. And taking the view of the Sahaba in Aqidah and in their fiqh and in their understanding of the religion. And then the next moment you find that they're a Rafa the Shia. The next moment you find that they've joined Ikhwan al-Muslimin. And then after that you see they've turned into a takfiri. Or they go with Jamaat al-Tablik. Or any of the other various sects and groups. And this shows you the strange, strange time we're living in. And this is why the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Alaykum bi sunnati. وَسُنَّةَ خُلَفَاءَ رَاشِدِينَ الْمَحْدِينَ أَذُوا عَلَيْهَا بِالنَّوَادِجْ وَإِيَّاكُمُ مُحْتَثَرَ الْمُورِ فَإِنَّ كُلَّ بِدَةٍ ضَلَالَةٍ He said, عَلَيْكَمْ بِسُنَّةِ And this was the ilaj, this was the medicine, this was the treatment for this illness of moving away from the sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and moving away from the understanding of the sahaba to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَعَيْنَ مَجْمَعِينَ it's upon you, my sunnah, and the sunnah of the rightly guided uh, khalifat. And who are the rightly guided khalifat? Abu Bakr, or Umar, or Uthman, or Ali, radiallahu ta'ala majma'een. So it's upon us, the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the sunnah of the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala majma'een. Not the sunnah of the new, uh, as the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then said, and beware of newly invented matters because every newly invented matter is going astray. So when you see people in this time and age saying that they're no longer from Ahl Sunnah, that now they have their own, they, they feel a new uh, uh, spirit in Islam or that they feel that there needs to be not a revival but rather a, a change and a modernization of the institutions in Islam and a modernization and a new, a new insight into the issues of creed and methodology on how to give dawah and that there needs to be 
a revigoration in fiqh, meaning that we should go away from the salaf and the madhahib, and instead we should come with our newly invented fiqh to look at these issues. Well, I live in America. It should be permissible to wear the beard, uh, to shave the beard. Well, I live in America. Uh, we shouldn't allow, the sisters don't have to wear hijab, they can wear pants. Well, we live in America. It's permissible to take riba and for at least just, just one house, as long as you take it for one house. All of this is battle. This has no uh, foundation in the Sharia, in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's deen, and that's what we have to remember. So Ahl Sunnah, they follow who? They follow the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Qala Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, as we mentioned in the last dars, he said this also forms part of the ways of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, that they follow the Athar of the Salaf, uh, of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in both manifest and inward sense and adopt the path of those who became the first believers of the Muhajireen and the Ansar and obey the will of the Prophet وسلم, when he said Alaykum bi sunnati wa sunnatu wa sunnati khulafai al-rashideen al-mahdiyeen min ba'di tamassiku biha wa adhu alayha bi nawadij wa iyyakum wa ahtathar al-umur fa inna kulla bidatin dalala so the Prophet وسلم, said, as we already mentioned in the hadith, that is upon you my sunnah and the sunnah of the rightly guided khalifat uh, that came after me, tamessiku biha, adhere to it strongly, and hold on to it with your molar teeth, bite down onto it with your molar teeth, and beware of newly invented matters, for every newly invented matter is a going astray. So this shows us that there is no bid'a hasan, as the people say. There is no good innovation in the religion of Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Al yom akmaltu lakum dinakum, wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati, wa radaytu lakum, lakum Islam adina. The Prophet, uh, uh, Allah tabarak wa ta'ala said in the Quran, This day I have perfected my religion, my religion, your religion for you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has perfected Islam for us. There's no need for newly invented matters. That rather, Islam is perfected and complete. And the Prophet ﷺ did his job. He did the wadifah to NBA. He did the full job. That yes, in this time and we face many different trials and tribulations and difficulties and new uh, situations that require thick and jurisprudence and an understanding. But it's taking those principles that the Salaf of this Ummah, that Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam left and applying it to our situation. Meaning the Sunnah never becomes irrelevant. The Madhab, the Minhaj of the Salaf never becomes uh, irrelevant. It's always relevant for us. And we... Uh, so, Shaykh al-Islam, he then said, after mentioning the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu he said, Ahl al-Sunnah know that the most truthful statement is the statement of Allah, and the best way of life is that of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They give preference to the statement of Allah over all kinds of statements other than him. They give uh, preference to the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam over the guidance of everyone else. And that is the reason why they are called Ahl kitabi Sunnah. That's why they're called Ahl Kitabi wa Sunnah. Because they hold on to the Quran and they hold on to the Sunnah of the Prophet. And we understand that we face new challenges and that we have uh, our youth are going astray. Our youth in, are infected by various, uh, various forms of onslaught of different ways of conquering their minds and hearts. There is a con concerted effort to corrupt the youth, not just the youth of Islam, but the youth around the world through music, through devil worship, through adultery and fornication and all of those things to lead us astray by our desires. All of those things which appeal to our desires, they are made beautiful. They, are, they have been beautified for us by the shaitan and the shayateen amongst the jinn and the ents, meaning the shayateen, the devils, amongst mankind in the jinn. It's been beautified us for us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Zuyana Zuyana Lilas Hubba Shahwat Meninisa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that it has been beautified for you. Zuyana Linas. It's been beautified for the people. The love of their desires for the women. 
And the Prophet Sallallahu said in this regard, Adunya sijinu mu'min wa jinnatul kafir, that this, this life is the prison of the believer and it is the sijinu mu'min wa jinnatul kafir and it's the paradise for the disbeliever. And the Prophet Sallallahu said in another authentic hadith collected in Sahih Muslim, he said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Inna allaha uh, Ittaqullah The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Inna allaha mustakhlifukum fil ard Fayandiru kayfa ta'maloon Or kama qala Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Fayandiru kayfa ta'maloon Fataqul dunya fataqul nisa Fayna awla fitna bani Israel Kana fi nisa The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said That Verily Allah has established the Prophet ﷺ said, In the dunya halawata khadira. That this life is a beautiful, it's like a beautiful garden. This worldly life is like a beautiful garden. Or halawata uh, khadira. It's like a beautiful garden. Or maybe a beautiful fruit. Or a, so it's, it's beautified for us. And verily, Allah establishes you, establishes you on the earth. And he looks to see what you will do. So fear the dunya. Fear the trappings of this world. Your, the wealth. The deception of the uh, uh, false beautification. Meaning women have to change their bodies to meet the expectations. They have to uh, not eat. They have to uh, get liposuction. Cut off layers of fat. They have to do their hair a certain way. They have to put cake makeup cakes of makeup to change and disfigure themselves, to beautify themselves, to fit the criterion that the shaitan has laid for you. The shaitan is laid because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us in various beautiful images. And he loves, he looks to what our hearts, what is in our hearts. He doesn't care. In the laha la yandru ila adsadikum walakin yandru lal qulubukum wa amalakum. But Allah doesn't look to your shapes, but he looks to your Deeds and your heart. That's another hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, letting us know to be cautious of this dunya. But going back to the hadith we were we were mentioning, the Prophet ﷺ said, "Fatakul dunya wa So fear this life, and fear the women. For verily, the first fitna or trial that befell the children of Israel was women. Meaning they were tested with women, with their desires for loving women, being corrupted, chasing by any means their desires. And this is incredibly dangerous fitna that we face daily. And how many of the people who've called to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have went astray? We see one minute they're on the pulpit urging and exhorting the people to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But in the depths of the night, or possibly in the day, they're doing other than what they preach. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhaladheena amanu, lima taf'alu, Ya ayyuhaladheena amanu, lima taf'alu ma, lima, lima yukuluna ma la taf'alun. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Saf, He says to Barak wa ta'ala, O oh, you who believe, why do you say that which you do not do? And there's so many ahadith also mentioning this and other verses in the Quran mentioning the danger of not practicing what you preach. How many callers have we found out that in, they were calling to the sunnah outwardly, but but with their companions, they were only calling to Hizbiyah. They were only calling to join them, to join their friends, to join their clique, to join the group that they call the people who are rightly guided. Instead of calling to Kitab Allah wa Sunnah Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Madhab of the Salaf of this Ummah, they called to their clique. And on top of that, they didn't practice what they preached. They, they uh, immersed themselves with people who are wicked people the people who deal drugs, the people who kill people. They commit zina regularly. They do all this fahisha. And they do this in the name of Islam. This is an incredibly dangerous trait, dangerous trait that we must beware. 
And we must come back to what? Kitabillah wa sunnat al-Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Qala Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala. In the last chapter he said, Ahl sunnah follow the commanding principles of the Sharia, doing what is recognized and refusing to do what is prohibited. Meaning, they command Amr bi ma'roof and nahi al munkar. Kama qala nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They command the good and they forbid the e evil. The Prophet sallallahu said in a hadith in Sahih Muslim, the hadith of Abi Sayyid al-Khudri radiyallahu ta'ala anhu qal sami'tu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqul Min ra'a minkum munkaran fil yughayruhu bi yadihi fa in lam yastati'fa bi lisanihi fa in lam yastati'fa bi qalbihi tha wa dhalika adaf al-iman The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said whoever amongst you sees a good sees an evil then change it with his hand if he's unable to do so, then change it with his tongue, meaning speak out against it. If he's unable to do so, then he should do so with his heart, meaning hating, hating it. And that is the weakest form of faith. And that shows us again, brothers and sisters in Islam, that Iman has different levels. Or Iman has different components. Iman, to Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah, as we mentioned in the previous lectures, that Iman is comprised of statements of the tongue, the Shahada, uh, speaking a good word, and so forth. S uh, making dhikr on your tongue. Iman is also comprised of deeds that you do. For example, removing a harm from the road, as the Prophet wasallam said. Or uh, commanding the good and forbidding the evil. Doing that by, by the hand. If you see someone that you have the control and the ability to stop from doing evil, and you do so, then you will be rewarded from that. As long as there is more, there is a greater benefit in doing that than there is harm. Meaning you are able to do so. And that's why the Prophet wasallam said, "Men ra'a min kum munkarin, biyad, fa in lam So if he is unable to do so, then he should do so with his tongue. So letting us know that those are all maratib or parts and components of iman. That iman is comprised of actions of the heart, meaning having uh, belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, itiqad, uh, tawakkul, relying on the law, putting your trust in Allah, uh, all, all the various deeds of the heart, uh, strictly relying upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, having fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all of those, and taqwa, all of those are matters of the heart. And then... So that comprises all those three levels of Iman. And that's what we gain from that hadith. And as Shaykh al-Islam was saying, that that is a characteristic of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah, is they command the good and they forbid the evil. Meaning if you see those people who say they're Salafi, or they say they're from Ahl Sunnah, or they say they're from Ahl Hadith, or they say they're from Ahl Athar, but they're not commanding the good, and they're not forbidding the evil, then it shows that they have a weakness in their Iman. That doesn't mean they're totally off the Sunnah, no or that they're outside of the fold of Islam. No, but it means their iman is weak and their tamasik bi sunnah is weak. Their adherence to the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu is weak because there are some people they have correct aqidah, but their manners are evil and they're, they're, they, they, they speak ill, they make ghibah, they curse people, they lie and slander. So there they contradict the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu in many ways, although they say they're from Ahl sunnah although they say they're calling uh, to kitab wa sunnah. But yet their actions are going against that. So that shows a weakness in iman. It shows a weakness in their, their tamasic, their adherence to the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu because the Prophet sallallahu his manners were the Qur'an. The Prophet sallallahu as Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha said, khulaqu uh, uh, al-Qur'an. So if you want to see the, the manners of the Prophet sallallahu to see how he sallallahu alayhi wa was, you will look at the Qur'an. You will read the Qur'an and contemplate the Qur'an and practice the Qur'an. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with to be of those who practice uh, the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu And Qala Shaykh al-Islam, rahimahullah ta'ala, after that, he said, they adhere to these principles, meaning Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah, and believe in performing Hajj and Jihad, Jumu'ah and Eid with the leaders, whether their leaders are good or bad. They preserve the congregation. This is very important. This contradicts the madhab of the Khawarij and the Takfiris of this day who make takfir of all the leaders and say this one's a kafir, this leader's a kafir, this one's not practicing Sharia properly, this one's doing this, and then they make takfir of them without the, the, the wabit 
of, of takfir. So they're going against the madhab and minhaj of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Therefore, they are not from Ahl Sunnah because they've went against one of the usul of Ahl Sunnah. That's why a takfiri, we don't say he's a takfiri sun, Sunni or takfiri uh, Salafi. No, there's no such thing. Uh, jihadi Salafi. No, no. But if someone is following the minhaj of the Salaf Asali, then they are Salafi. They're following the Quran. They're following the Sunnah of the Prophet. They're following the Madhab of the Salaf and understanding the religion and practicing the religion and calling to the religion. Then they're from Ahl Sunnah. So, this is an important part of Creed is that Ahl Sunnah they believe in praying behind the ruler, making jihad behind the ruler if he calls behind it, making Hajj behind the ruler, Jumwa and Eid with the leaders, whether they are good or evil. And this is. All throughout the books of Ahl Sunnah, you'll find this. And so many books of the Creed. Go back to Shara Sunnah Imam Babahari. Go back to, uh, go to the books of, uh, in Fiqh even. Look in the Kitab that you had in the books of Fiqh on all the madhabs. Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Malik, Imam Shafi'i, Imam ah Ahmed, Rahimahumullah uh, Jamian. That you'll find, and according to their madhab. And even Imam Ibn Hazm, Rahimahullah Ta'ala. All of the imams, the great imams in the past and up to present, you'll find this in the books of fiqh, you'll find it in the books of Aqidah. Ahl sunnah they follow the principle of exhorting the ummah and have faith in the statement of the Prophet wasallam. A mu'min is like an edifice, uh, edifice for another mu'min, some parts of which hold fast to the others. A mu'min, lil mu'min kel bunyan yushidduhu ba'dhu ba'd. So the mu'min, uh, believers are brothers to one another. That they strengthen one another. They don't weaken one another. Tear each other's uh, apart. Tear each other's character down. Slander and curse and backbite one another. That's not what the believer does. The believer follows the example of the Prophet wasallam, where he said, A mu'min is like the edifice for another mu'min. Some parts which hold fast to the others. And then the Prophet wasallam, he joined his fingers with one another and explained it. So the Prophet wasallam. He put his fingers together, showing that this is the state, this is how the believers are. They love one another. They care for one another. Even when someone's from Ahl Bid'ah, we don't make takfir of them unless they have Bid'ah Mukaffara, and this is done from the people who have the right and have the ability to make that takfir, the knowledge, the knowledge, the scholars, the ulama, and also the Qudat, the 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 Qudat, the 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 the, the, the judges in, in the Muslim lands. They're the ones who, are, who give these um, rulings. But it's not for us to, to make takfir and tabdir and tafsik of the layman, to call him a kafir, to call him a, uh, an innovator, to call him uh, a wicked sinner, unless you have the ability to do so. Unless you know the criterion for doing it. You know the shurut, the conditions for doing it. You know the muana, those things will prohibit from those pers persons leaving the fold of Islam or not being an innovator or something. So the Prophet, uh, the Shaykh al-Islam said, the Prophet sallallahu said, the mutual love and mercy among them could be likened to an organ. Whenever one part of an organ is hurt, the whole body becomes restless and, and like fever, with fever. The Prophet sallallahu made a, a likeness that the believer, they're like an organ. So when we see our brothers and sisters in Burma, being burned alive, being killed and slaughtered, we feel pain. When we see our brothers and sisters in Syria being slaughtered by wicked shayateen, devils from amongst mankind and jinn, we feel pain. We want good for them. We supplicate to them. We spend our wealth to help them in any other way that we can help them. Bi'idnillah ta'ala. Ahl sunnah advise fortitude at a time of calamity and hardship and exhort thankfulness during the time of ease and acceptance of the decision of Allah. So Ahl Sunnah is, is, their hearts are comforting with the Qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and encourage one another to be patient. What to wasu bin haqi, what to wasu bin sabr. They call one another to the truth and they call each one another to patience. And also encourage one another to be thankful and to accept the decree. They invite people to follow the best manner and noble character and morals, perform good deeds, and have faith in the meaning of the statement of the Prophet wasallam. The man of most perfect faith among the mu'mineen is that one who is best in character. Look at that. 
That's a characteristic of Ahl al-Sunnah to al-Jama'ah. That is, in fact, from the usul of Ahl al-Sunnah. This book, Aqidah to Wasatiyah, is about the creed of Ahl al-Sunnah to al-Jama'ah. It's about what Ahl al-Sunnah believes and what Ahl al-Sunnah does. So Ahl al-Sunnah to al-Jama'ah, they should show the best of examples. Unfortunately, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us, many of us who claim to be from Ahl al-Sunnah, and sometimes they are and sometimes they aren't, and still exhibit horrible manners. That they curse the people and they make the people run from them and run from the da'wah to Ahl sunnah They say, you are from Ahl bidah You are this. They curse this one. They curse the leader of that masjid. They make hajr of this one. They don't give salam to that one. No, not unless it is those uh, du'abit, those aspects of Islam are restricted to doing those things by knowledge when it comes to making hajr, meaning get, not giving a salam to a mu'min. Sometimes that is legislated in matters of religion. If the person is from Ahl bidah and you see that there's a benefit in, by making hajr and not giving them salams, it will bring them back to the sunnah, bring them back away from their sins or something. Yes, or it protects you from their harm or as a punishment for them or to set an example for the rest of the community so the community is not infected by their bid'ah, you warn against them. All of those things are legislated. Those are all a part of the creed and minhaj of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. The tariqah to salaf salaf ummah, salaf salaf hadhihi ummah, the salaf al-sari, that's a part of Islam. But what we're talking about is those people who exhibit bad manners and they jump and make hajr of people for the smallest mistake. Or what they perceive is a mistake because they don't have the knowledge to be able to distinguish haq between battle. How many brothers and sisters have we heard of not knowing how to read Fatiha properly? And then they are going and testing the people. What's your position about so-and-so? What's your position about this sheikh who, who lives in the Arab Peninsula who you don't even know Arabic about? don't even know the Arabic language, and you don't even have access to this person's knowledge, nor can you be harmed by him, but we need to know your position. That is a spread of fitna. That is a spread of fitna, and anyone wants to challenge that, go back to the statements of the Salaf of this Ummah, and then even in our time, go to the statements of Bin Baz, go to the states of Al-Albani, go to the states of of, uh, of, uh, of uh, Bin Uthameen, or Sheikh Muqbil, and those who are living or speaking very much because we're receiving, we're having experience in this fitna a lot. Go to the statements of Sheikh Salah bin Fuzan, have for the law Taala, and you'll see a lot of jewels and benefit that will hopefully strengthen your heart and give you ilm wa fiqh and basira in these matters. To know that these things are not easy matters, that you just go and you exhibit bad manners in the name of being Salafi, in the name of being from Ahl Sunnah, in the name of being from Ahl Hadith, no, you should have the best of manners. Ahl Sunnah is the best of manners, and that's what Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah was saying. If, if you follow the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "The man of most perfect faith among the Mu'minin is the one who is best in care uh, in in manners." The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Ma min shayin atkulu fi mizan mu'min yom al qiyama min husn al khut wa inna Allah yubghidu al fahish al badi." The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, and this is enough. It's enough. It's sufficient. We we don't need to look at any other explanations. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said. There isn't a thing heavier on the scale of the believer on the day of judgment. I mean, uh, more than good manners. And verily Allah hates wicked and sinful speech. So when you backbite your brother, when you break your brother, tear your brother's character down, when you don't cover your brother's faults, and you speak ill and, and, and curse them and accuse them of bid'ah and accuse them of this and accuse them of this unjustly, I'm talking about unjustly, then are you, you following the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam? Are you fo following what Muhammad ibn Abdullah said? That there isn't a thing that weighs heavier on the scale of a believer on the day of judgment than good manners? That's what the Prophet wasallam said. And there's many hadith that say, Shaykh al-Islam said, they exhort to mend ties to him who cuts you off. Look at that. Shaykh al-Islam said that. He said, meaning Ahl sunnah they encourage people to mend the ties between those who cut you off. If someone doesn't give you salam, you're the one striving to mend the ties. Unless it is pure diniyah, 
meaning there is a maslaha shari'a in, in cutting them off and making hajr from them. To give to him who has forbidden you and forgive him who has done wrong to you. They order for righteous treatment with parents, keeping ties of kinship, good treatment with your neighbors, the orphans, the destitute, travelers, compassion to the slaves. They prohibit pride and conceit and justice or uh, and just and are just and they uh, they prohibit being unjust and torturing people. They teach high morals and check the low morals. And you know, they look, when they see people are, are doing sinfulness, they check them and they try to encourage them and they try to raise the standard of morality. That's what the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ should do for you. If you're practicing someone who's Salafi Sahih, Haqiqi, then their example should be, will raise the people. But unfortunately, uh, more often than not, we've had a lot of bad examples in our communities of certain brothers and certain sisters who maybe because they didn't have enough knowledge, maybe because they only understood some parts of the, the, the minhaj of the Salaf, but they forgot another janib of the Salaf. But no. So never be of those like this person who is supposed to be a big dai around who says, I'm, I used to be Salafi. Never be like this individual who goes around causing facade in the world. He's popular, and he can have his popularity. But if it's not for the sake of Allah, and he abandons the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi for the sake of popularity, all he will get in Yom Al-Qiyamah is popularity. He won't get the reward of practicing the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the menhaj and methodology of the Salaf of this Ummah. In all of these things which they profess and practice, they follow the Qur'an and the Hadith. Their creed is the religion of Islam, which was sent to the world by Allah through the Prophet ﷺ. But the Prophet ﷺ said, If so the Prophet ﷺ let us know that the Ummah would break in the 73 sects, all of them in the fire except one. And then they asked, who are they, Messenger of Allah? He said, those who are upon my sunnah and the sunnah of my companions. Those that are the jama'ah, those that are the main group of the Muslims, those, that, those people form Ahl Sunnah with jama'ah. That's who Ahl Sunnah is. If you want to know who Ahl Sunnah is, go back over this treatise. Read it in English. Go over it and understand what is the creed? What do Salafis believe? What, do, what does Ahl Sunnah believe? What does Ahl Athar believe? What does Ahl Hadith believe? What do they believe? What's the minaj of the Salaf? And you'll find it in this book, Aqidah to Wasatiya. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah ta'ala. Also, in one hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, they are those who, who will follow this path, which I and my sahaba follow today. And that was in Tirmidhi. Therefore, they hold tightly to Islam, free from every thing, every uh, uh, thing which goes astray, which uh, is a change in Islam, in the methodology, in fiqh, in aqidah. And these are the people of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. This is what Shaykh al-Islam, rahimahullah ta'ala said. This group includes the truthful ones, the martyrs, and the virtuous persons. It includes the signposts of guidance, lamps in the darkness, and owners of such superiorities and virtues which have already been mentioned. It includes the abdal and also those imams on whose, who, whose guidance Muslims are unanimous, meaning the a'imma, like Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Malik, Imam Shafi, Imam Ahmed, those great imams, those were imams of Ahl Sunnah. Those weren't Ashiris, those weren't Maturidiyas, those weren't Sufis, they weren't uh, any of those other sects, but they were from Ahl Sunnah. They had the creed of Ahl Sunnah with Jama'ah. It is this successful group about which the Prophet ﷺ said, one group from my ummah will always remain dominant upon the truth. Their opponents will never be able to harm its members or afflict them upon, up to the establishment of the last hour. The Prophet ﷺ said, لا تزال طائفة من أمتي على الحق المنصورة لا يضرهم من خالفهم ولا من خذلهم حتى تقوم الساعة. So the Prophet ﷺ said, one group from my ummah 
will always remain dominant upon the truth. Their opponents will never be able to harm its members or afflict them up to the establishment of the last hour. And we already explained this hadith in the one of the first lectures. And Shaykh Islam, he ended his treaties by making dua for the people who read this beautiful and beneficial treaties. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless Shaykh Al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah with Jannah to Firdos for what he left behind for the Ummah to follow in guidance in preserving the Sunnah and reviving the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and refuting Ahl Bidah and showing an example and making jihad against Ahl Zandaka and the, the disbelievers who hated Islam and fought Islam and doing all those righteous deeds. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him with Jannah to Firdos and have mercy upon him. We request Allah to include us also among such people and do not flinch our hearts after giving guidance and bestow his mercy upon us. He is certainly the generous and the law is the most knowing. The mercy and blessing of Allah be upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his family and his sahaba abundantly. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabi and Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Thus ends our study of the book Aqidat Wasatiyah and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept this from us and bless it to be beneficial for us and bless us with Al Nafi and Ruskin Taibu Amal Mutakabilan. Wasallallahu Sallam Alaihi Wasallam.